Hello lovely people, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Station. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we've got a sewing mix video which is a little bit different uh, for reasons I can't actually sort of do my usual upbeat kind of show and tell but today we're just going to be doing it nice and calm, relaxed and traditional as I show you my six maxi dresses that I am super excited about. First up is the Love Notion Summer Basics Tank Dress, which I absolutely love. It is a very simple, easy to sew pattern that is available in sizes XS to 5X. I sewed the size small based on my bust and waist measurements and the first time I saw this pattern was actually on It Is Josie and I'll link her channel in the description box down below and I absolutely loved how it looked and that was well over two years ago and it's something that I'd been wanting to make. So with this Art Gallery Fabrics jersey, this cotton jersey, I knew that it had to be this particular type of dress. It was either that or eraser bag but this is a super easy to sew up pattern it came together so wonderfully and even the dimensions for the neck band and the armhole bands worked really really well so I don't know if you've spotted the mistake in this but I didn't actually have enough fabric to cut the long maxi so I did a little bit of MacGyver in in order to get it to go all the way and so that's on both sides but because the fabric is so busy you can't really tell and also one side has got a different direction because I sort of messed up the cutting out a little bit. If you're used to my channel, you'll know that I do love so different patterns and this everyday chic dress sewing pattern. I have made this, I think this is the fifth one now. So I made it out of this Lady McElroy Florenza crepe, which is a gorgeous, it's got this most wonderful drape. I did have to adjust uh, the pockets. So instead of having those big baggy pockets, I went for sightseeing pockets, but I sadly miscalculated and they're a little bit lower than where I would have liked them to be but hey low hung pockets is better than no pockets at all so I basically wanted to create a very columnar flowy type look and I added a flounce at the bottom uh, Laura Casey the owner of so different patterns she's got a tutorial on her blog on how to add the flounce over there I didn't do the sharing that normally would give it a bit more shaping because I just wanted it to have this free flowing look. I personally love wearing it with my slim tan belt. I just feel very elegant and very poised. For the neckline, I decided to finish it in a contrasting bias binding just to sort of give it a little bit of an underlining factor. And there you go. You can see the inside out that the pockets are just a little bit lower than where I would have liked them to be and there is the bias bound neckline finish so it came together very quickly because I wasn't doing the shearing and I love it I love the fabric I love the dress and I feel very cool and calm in it Okay, my Birda love is popping up with this Birda style for 2015 number 105 dress. It's an art deco style dress and I'm super happy to finally have made this because I traced out this pattern about four and a half years ago and I'd completely forgotten that I had this pattern until I was reorganizing and I saw it and it instantly snapped that this would be perfect for this Lady McElroy crepe fabric. I do like the flowy Florenza crepes that Lady McElroy does and this one was a bit more vintagey ditzy. It's a little bit on the darker side in terms of the colors that I normally go for but it's got beautiful floral poses. I especially love the cute little bow detail on this bird dress. I know in the line I haven't shown you the one that's got the bow but this pattern comes with um, two variations one has got uh, the bow which is just a you know like a belt that you sew up and then you add to the neckline so with Berta I always saw my size 38 and it came out uh, looking like I expected it to based on the images in the magazine and it was surprisingly quick to sew up despite the intricate looking line drawing so basically it's got a side panel it doesn't have a side seam so you've got a panel and you sort of work and finish that panel before you then attach the godets before you then do um, those seams at the front 
and how you get that beautiful flow at the bottom the mermaidy uh, style is because you've got the semi-secular godets and those give the hem and sort of like a handkerchief hem look a lot of detail with this and I love how this turned out but I would love to make it again using something like a cotton seersucker that's got a bit of a stripe so that I can play around with the stripes and actually really show off the design bones of this pattern but I love it I feel super elegant love wearing it with the dress and yeah glad that I finally got to sewing it up after four and a half years of the pattern hanging about in my sewing cave with the hem, because the godets are cut uh, basically on a bias and so on on a bias, I suppose you could let it hang for several days before you uh, did the hem if you wanted a more even hem, but I sort of don't mind. We're moving on to another burda now and it's burda style 6602 which is one of my favorite unisex t-shirt patterns. I've made this for my husband several times and I decided to lengthen it into a dress to make it into a t-shirt dress using this Lady McElroy uh, dusky mauve uh, jersey fabric. So it is a jersey fabric but it's got a very small content of lycra and spandex in it so it doesn't do very well for um, tighter t-shirt styles I think it works very well for the looser t-shirt styles I decided to use a contrasting uh, cuffing just to add some poppingness uh, to it so I got this because I was going through very much a nude lipstick phase I prefer wearing it belted up and that's me laughing because my husband was like huh so this is a fancy um, potato sack dress <laughs> To give you context of why I'm laughing over there but I like it I think that it's a very lovely simple dress for when I don't want to feel very extra but I do want to look together right moving over now to something that's a little bit more extra and it's the Kate and Rose patterns Giselle maxi dress now it comes in two views view A and B but I've sort of mashed together view A and view B so I've got the bodies for view A and the skirt for view B and I made it in some art gallery fabrics rayon which I absolutely love and I decided to use a contrasting fabric and I had some leftover scraps of this rifle paper co uh, bright orange rayon and I think that it you know I got a very anthropology vibe thing when I saw the fabrics together and I was like you know what I'm gonna go crazy and mix and match these patterns now this pattern is a perennial favorite for me I've been sewing this since I started sewing my first one is from way back in 2015 I think and I think that this one is my sixth or my seventh one I I, I just I love this pattern and so I decided to go extra with all of the pattern mixing so for the neck edge I did a bias bound and for the armhole edges as well I bias bound it in the contrasting fabric and whilst for the waist yoke the midriff uh, shaping I also went for that so what's really nice about this is that it is a really loose fitting style but you get some minimal shaping at the back by adding an elastic band on that waist and as well as the belts which are entirely optional and I decided to add like a little ribbon type trim at the bottom point of the upper flounce and the lower flounce just to add some more detail I just got really I had so much fun when I was sewing this because I did get carried away just adding in a little bit more detail and a little bit more detail the style doesn't have any pockets and I add pockets to it because pockets are everything and I'm trying to show you there the detail of the elastic that you sew into the seam allowance at the waistband I reinforced the section where the pocket was going to go and I highly recommend doing this if you're ever sewing with rayon or any lightweight fabric you have to reinforce those section where the pockets are going to go because they will get used 
and they will gape eventually if you don't reinforce them and i personally prefer to gather the panel first and then sew the pocket um, on there but there's a close-up of how you get that elastic into the seam allowance using a zigzag stitch and you just get some added extra comfortable shaping all in all i love this dress i cannot wait i cannot wait for summer to come in full and i will be wearing this all the time if my previous Giselles are anything to go by because those get worn to death. <laughs> Dress number six is from Grassa and it's Grassa number 767. Now you all know that I'm a big fan of Grassa patterns and this dress when it came out I snapped it up straight away because they do give a discount on the patterns within the first uh, week of them being released so I try and pick them up uh, then. But I loved this dress so much and it is possibly the most complex sewing pattern that I have worked on recently because it is full of so much detail and it took me about a year to actually get to sewing this from buying the pattern and then printing it out and taping it together but it you know once I got into the groove of actually sewing I got into the flow and I absolutely enjoyed it so my husband calls this the flamenco dress because he's like every time he sees me he's like come on you know just snap into your flamenco-ness <laughs> I added a really lovely trim on those flatter sleeves and I'm trying to show you the detail at the back here but I do apologize the camera zoom just wasn't working really well but we've got a little peekaboo detail which I absolutely love I normally don't wear this bra with this dress though so that bra isn't something that I would wear when I'm wearing something that's going to expose the back over at the front we've got a very deep V neckline so this is very low and with grassa patterns that's something that you have to be aware of when it is a low neckline it is a low neckline so um, if that's something that bothers you in future you could obviously um, raise the neckline or you can add a modesty panel but I'm perfectly fine with this and normally when I'm wearing the bra that I would be wearing with this dress um, you can't see the bra and so in order to show you the details on the inside I had to take off the dress and lay it down on the floor because it's nearly impossible to actually put this dress on inside out but as you can see all of the details all of the thought that is put into the pattern is just amazing and consequently it is such a pleasure to sew with I used a Bemberg lining um, to do the lining and I used a lightweight interfacing and the shaping on the bodice top is achieved with some princess seams at the back and it's also got some belt loops which are fiddly to do but I think that they are worth it for this style here so it turned out to be something that I was very very happy and pleased with so because the front panels are cut on a bias and they're curved I did use some stay tape which is like a fusible stay tape that you cut along and it's a very useful thing to do it means that it doesn't stretch out when you're actually sewing it up so that's it guys thank you so much for hanging out with me until the end and uh, seeing the six maxi dresses that I have made now it's your turn do let me know in the comments box down below which one is your favorite out of all of these i would really really love to know remember all of the links are in the description box down below with the links to the patterns and the fabrics and i've also included links to my shoes and the headband because i do get a lot of people asking me where did you get those shoes from or where did you get that headband from until i see you next time lovely people happy sewing take care now bye Oh, and also please do remember to subscribe if you're not already and like because it does support the channel. Thanks. Bye.